Yeah, West Indies having the advantage, buoyed by the stunning test victory over the Aussies. 50 over captain Shea Hope says the Windies are ready for the one day international series down under. Focus shifts to the white ball phase of the tour, which bowls off on Thursday night, 10.30 p.m. Jamaica time, 11.30 Eastern Caribbean time, live on Sportsmax. Hope spoke to the media after the official captain's photo shoot, saying his team is pumped for the challenge. We want to, as I said before, this is a very inspiring win that, that they had in the last test. Uh, it's a great momentum for us. This is a different format, but it's a great sign for us to, to continue what happened in the last test to, to this whole series. series. Yeah, like we always say in the dressing room, every game matters. It's not necessarily about series or an opponent. You have to take every single game as, as, as a final. And it's nice to see the guys are really taking to the new system and the way we're trying to play our cricket. So yeah, it's just, just one game at a time and then the results will take care of itself. Yeah, let's remind you of what the West Indies squad looks like for this one-day international series against Australia. Three matches in this series. She hope the captain, Alzara Joseph, the vice-captain, Alec Athanes, Teddy Bishop, Casey Carty, Roston Chase, Matthew Ford, Justin Graves, Kavim Hodge, Tevin Imlat, Gudakesh Moti, Kieran Otley, Romaria Shepard, O'Shane Thomas and Hayden Walsh Jr. returning to the West Indies fold. Let's get the thoughts of Nikhil Uttam. Chandani, who is in South Africa, but very much following cricket right across the world. Uh, Nikhil, it's a pleasure to have you back on the Sportsmax Zone. How are you doing today? Yeah, always happy when I can return to the zone, especially when you're on as well, Ricardo Chambers. <laughs> oh, you say all the right things. That much I can say. Um, what do you have to say about this one-day international series between West Indies and Australia. Um, in many ways, a new look West Indies squad. Australia also with a number of changes to their 50-over setup for this series. Um, how does this one strike you? Yeah, it's going to be definitely a challenge, Ricardo. Um, I find it really interesting to see the amount of media publications and even Shea Hope in that little interview there. Talking about this word momentum, and don't get me wrong, I think the West Indies will take something from that test series. I don't think momentum is the right word, though. I would more say confidence. Momentum, for me, it tells me as a viewer that that performance in the test series makes a significant impact on the way that the series, the one international series that is, goes. The reason I disagree with that is because this is Australia, the world champion. So they're not going to turn up and say, well, look, this is a West Indies team that beat us in the test series. Now we, we must concede or we must play a weaker brand of our cricket. These are the world champions. However, what I do think it works in favor of is for the West Indies. Uh, when it comes to confidence, I think you've got a young group of guys, uh, many of them who are now making, who just played their first one international series against England or in their uh, first couple of series. What I believe that that win does in the test series is give them the confidence to know a well, lot. As dominant as Australia are and have been, we believe that we can defeat them. So I don't know if momentum is the right word, but I think confidence-wise, especially given that Australia have a few new guys, a few uncapped players as well, the West Indies will believe that they can compete. Uh, whether they can beat them is another story in these conditions will be difficult, but definitely excited to see the talent on show. Yeah, when you look at the Australia bowling lineup, for example, the likes of Pat Cummins, um, the captain, Steve Smith, is now leading this one-day international side. Cummins not there. Mitchell Stark, Josh Hazelwood not there, um, who were brilliant, as usual, in the Test series. How much does that change the look and the quality of the Australian bowling lineup? Yeah, when I look at that bowling lineup, Ricardo, I think uh, definitely pace is in abundance. Uh, as someone like Alan Morris, who is yet to make his international debut but if you watch him in the big bash etc everything is over 145 kilometers per hour and he's got a really threatening short delivery they've got someone like xavier barlett in the squad he took 20 wickets uh in the big bash but was excellent at the back end of the inning so even though there's no start there's no hazelwood the fact that they have those seamers who they have sort of been bringing through that domestic setup done well in the marsh cup for example their list day tournament I think they'll be firing and rearing and ready to go because they've waited so long for an opportunity. Lance Morris has been in the test squad now for a couple of years and has never gotten that actual call-up. So just on that basis, I think they're going to be hungry. They're going to be ready to display. And they've got Adam Zampa, who we all know is one of a world-class leg spinner and was a big part and reason why they won the World Cup just months ago. 
Yeah, let's have a quick look at that Australia squad for this series against the West Indies. A 13-man squad to be led by Steve Smith. Of course, no David Warner, who has retired from international cricket. Travis Head is there. Sean Abbott, Xavier Bartlett, Jake Fraser McKirk. Cameron Green, Aaron Hardy, Josh Inglis, Marnus Lamashey, and Lance Morris, who you just spoke about, Matt Short, Will Sutherland, and Adam Zampa, who you spoke about as well. I want us to zone in quickly on McKirk because he has been producing a lot of quick runs. You spoke about um, Australia's domestic 50-over tournament, scored a world record century in that tournament last October, coming off 29 deliveries. And amazingly, the second 50 coming in only 11 deliveries. It is clear that this man can really strike the ball. How much of a danger you think he's going to be if he gets the opportunity to play to this West Indies bowling attack? Yeah, he's a superstar, Ricardo. I think the world has seen enough. Um, you look at that big bash season, following up the domestic tournament that he had that you mentioned. Um, he scored that 257 runs. 42% of the runs were in sixes. He is just a genuine, natural six hitter. Uh, it's the way he strikes the ball, the mentality at which he's sort of occupies the crease with. It's just ruthless. What I want to see is now when he makes that step up to the international level, where guys are of a certain caliber, they will work you out, they will try to find your weaknesses. Can he sustain that fearless approach, especially in the 50 over format? But in terms of talent, in terms of potential, and just the fearlessness of the younger generation coming through in cricket now, this man is right part and parcel as to what you think white ball cricket is becoming. And he is just extraordinary when you watch the shots that he plays. Um, as I mentioned, that 250 runs that he scored in the Big Bash, it came at a strike rate of 160. And he's not opening the batting and batting consistently in the power play. So it was really great to see. And it'll be interesting to see how the West Indies can counter that as well because he will come at them. So it does give them an opportunity to get him out. But if he comes off, he can really attack you in those middle overs where the West Indies have struggled with the ball in the past. Yeah, and speaking about struggling with the ball... Shea Hope was also asked about his vice-captain, Alzari Joseph, and Alzari has had a fairly good test series. He now moves from that performance and he has to, of course, get ready for the white ball competition. Talk to me, Nikhil, about your assessment of Alzari and how do you think he's going to suit up and fare for this ODI series? Well, I think, Mariah, if there's one thing that we know about Azari Joseph is that he's a competitor. You look at his face all through the test series, whether they take a wicket, whether he gets hit for a boundary, it is just serious business all around. And he'll be really up for a challenge like this. I think it's also why he hasn't taken the route of other guys who have gone to play the T20 tournaments. Let's be real, Azari Joseph, with that pace, can play in any T20 tournament he wants. But he has opted to not only play the test series, play the one international series and the T20 international series because... He has a point to prove. He understands legacy and understands how important it is, especially against a team like Australia, in these conditions to do well. And I think as the leader of the attack, he has matured so much. And his test results is the biggest highlight for that because he started a test format inconsistently, never really developed a rhythm. Whereas now, I think he's really found what works for him. That length has become a lot more consistent when he can hit that good length, that pace. And then we all know when he goes to the short ball, he's got the Yorker now. So... For me, it's a legacy-building series for him, especially the 50-over format, because of the fact that he's now officially the leader of the attack in all three formats, I would say. Yeah, well, batting, it's no secret that once it fires, we do well, but it has been a topic of discussion on batting, struggling for quite some time. How important is it that our skipper, Shea Hope, steps up and, of course, leads from the front? Yeah, well, I don't even need to say it. Everyone knows that you look at the West Indies' performances last two years, it's been very Shea Hope based. What I want to see in this series, more is who can be with him at the crease, who can spend time with him, but also take some of the burden off of him because it's clear that against any opposition in any conditions, we know he will perform. But look, guys have runs of bad, bad series or, I mean, it's cricket. So every single game, we can't depend on Shea Hope to score 50 or 100 to get us over the line. Can a Justin Graves, who scored over 400 in the regional, 400 runs in the regional tournament, got injured for that England series, can he step into that opening slot alongside Ali Afanese and take some of the weight off of Shea Hope's shoulders? Teddy Bishop, no sure if in Rutherford in this series, the way that he batted in the Super 50, I'm looking forward to seeing him if he does get a chance at five or six to come in and play that same aggressive brand of cricket. 
come in the middle overs and shot teams, counter-attack with the aggressive stroke play. I'll never forget that 95 not out he made at Taruba. I think it was in 70-odd balls. And it just showed that he can really find the boundary at will in the middle overs. We've missed players like that. So can a young guy like him, Imla, Kevin Hodge, who are yet to really make an impact into international cricket, can one of them step up and say, Shea, we understand your greatness, but we are here to support. And if you get runs in Australia, it goes a long way, not only in international cricket, the franchise circuit, and just your overall record, I would say. So it's a huge opportunity. Yeah, I want to build on that. And I want to ask your question, uh, Nikhil, about um, Shea Hope and what the Aussies may plan for him. But Athenes, because he has so much quality, as far as I'm concerned, um, and didn't do very well in the Test Series, um, how, how much do you think he will, or will he be more comfortable in this ODI series than he may have been in the Test Series? I think definitely, uh, Lance. When you look at the way Athenes has come through, uh, going all the way back to the 19 World Cup, he's always excelled in the white ball format. And I think he's going to have a very long career in the Test format. But why I think I've seen enough for him to do well in this series is because when I look at that England series of him opening the batting, a new role for him, Yes, he's done it domestically, but to do it in international cricket is quite new. And still, yes, he, he didn't really convert any of those starts into big hundreds, but I've seen enough against high-quality pace bowling. Reese Topley, who's in one of the best white ball bowlers right now in the world when he's fit, um, and some of the other England seamers at times on challenging decks. I think Athenes is very good against pace as well because of how strong he is square of the wicket. So I think on these pitches, um, and yes, he didn't have the, the most illustrious test series, but I also think the fact that there's no Hazelwood, no Stark, uh, no Cummins helps him in this one international series for sure. And just because of how good he is against pace, as we've seen in the Caribbean, I expect him to come good. And he, he'll know. He'll know that he's been under some pressure and hasn't really been able to contribute to winning as much as he would have liked. So I definitely think he'll be ready for this series. And yeah, just the fact that he's so good against pace, I think he'll come good. Yeah, Nikhil, you were so good during the Caribbean Premier League with your predictions and subsequent to that as well in the Super 50 last year. So it's a new year, but I don't suspect that the quality has left you to make these predictions. So how is this series going to go? Yeah, unfortunately, uh, Ricardo, as much as I want to say with the West Indies and the one day international series, I think they're going to win a game. Don't get me wrong. I think I like them to win one game and challenge Australia. But I think that side, just because they're playing at home and even the newcomers that they have, have been in and around that Aussie setup for a while and have just done really well domestically in the Marsh Cup and Big Bash. So I'm going to go Australia 2-1. Yeah, I wonder what you would have said for the Test Series, but I guess we'll never know. <laughs> Nikhil, we'll chat. I, I wouldn't have got that right. I wouldn't have got that right. I, wouldn't have got that. I, I don't think anybody would have. Um, Lance and Mariah, this is going to be another intriguing series um, following the, the Test campaign where the West Indies team shocked just about everyone with their performances, especially in that second test. This One Day International Series provides another opportunity for a few of the young players to step up and perform and make a name for themselves. Yeah, I think the confidence from the test, the fact that they would have been there having the conversations with the players that, I'd say, created history during that test performance, I think they're going to be coming out with that same sort of energy. They're going to be having the conversation so that, you know, they too can feel that it's possible for them to go up against an Australian team and, of course, dominate. So, like Nikhil, Nikhil says he thinks they'll win one match. I'm giving them the opportunity to win two. I think West Indies is not going to be a pushover based on the confidence that they have. Their brothers have already won that test match, that second test match. They're not going to be a pushover. So you think West Indies will win the series? No, I didn't say that. They're going to win... How many is it in total? It's three. Oh, no. So... I, I keep thinking it's five. <laughs> Ooh. No, you're in a spot. You're backed up by some really quick pace bowling here. Yeah. Because... What, what does Ramarat do, Lance? Yeah. Can she fend she, it off? She suggested they would win two matches. Yes. But she said it because she thought it was five. Five, yeah, yeah. it's a T20. So no, you think it's just one win that the West Indies will get in the ODI series? Yeah, I don't think Australia is going to be pushed over. But what about you? You have <laughs> but, to speak. Well, I, I think the Australians <laughs> will win the series. There was a reason why I asked him about Alec Athenes just now, because I expect Athenes to do better in the ODIs than he did in the Test Series. 
field placings and so on are different in white ball cricket than they are in test cricket. And I like Athenes to perform well here. It's important to note that there is only one batsman in this entire series that has a world top 10 ranking at the moment. And that's Shea Hope. David Warner is in the top 10, but he's not playing. So um, I think the Aussies will target Shea Hope because of how prolific he is. And they will be specifically aggressive with him because they see him as a team leader, not only from the strategic standpoint as a captain, but the most prolific batsman that the West Indies has. So I think the Australians will pay a lot of attention to them. Um, I, I'm not concerned from an Australian standpoint about the newcomers because uh, the Australian depth in their cricket is so wide that I think the new players will be just as potent or maybe not just as potent, but I don't think they should be underestimated. So there's no Josh Hazelwood and company. I don't think that's so much of a setback for the Aussies. Well, 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 Lance Whitaker strategizing for his favorite team, Australia. Let's go to a break. <laughs> we'll be back with more on the Sports Max Zone. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah, we rally, rally. 